Now, if you watched last night, you'll have seen Stuart announce that he is leaving the BBC. It was as much of a surprise to us here as it was to you. Stuart had always told me when he decided to leave, he would just go without any fuss. And that is what he did. But for goodness sake, it's been 37 years and we need more. So we sent reporter Richard Daniel to catch up with him at home to ask what's kept him motivated all these years. I love news. I, I love challenging people who who needed challenging. I love meeting people who'd done something special. Throughout those 37 years, what sticks in your memory? I, I think um, the Soham case with the two little girls who went missing. I was there every night for a couple of weeks. Um, and that's the one that I'll always remember. Do one thing for me tonight. Put your arms around your children and tell them you love them. And say a prayer for two families who would give almost anything for that simple pleasure. And of course, the flip side of that, the best of human nature. Yeah, yeah, you do, you see some, some great things. I mean, just recently, uh, to go and see Max Whitlock, um, people like that, people who have done great things and who remain really very approachable. Aren't we lucky to, to get those chances to meet people, to go, in, to go into Downing Street, to, to meet archbishops, to meet, I've interviewed two members of the royal family. One of your most important roles is holding people in power to account, isn't it? You said you knew the area you were searching. Yes. Then you extended the search, so you didn't know the area. Are you, are, are you going to pay bank charges to those people who had to pay bank charges because one of your checks came back? The question hasn't arisen. But I'm, I'm asking we're... you now then, will you? We used to have a, a, an output editor who used to say, we prove ourselves on the big nights. And uh, I like to think that we did that. You kept your departure under wraps. No one knew. Why? And why now? I mean, I'm, I'm in my mid-70s. Mid That's why now. Um, and 37 years is, is a long time. And I still love it. And I want to, I want to go while I still love it. Um, I kept it under wraps because it was an emotional day for me, Richard. There have been a huge number of messages pouring in from people wishing you well. What, what do those messages mean? They mean everything, because actually, as I said last night, at least I hope I said it, I, I haven't watched it back, I think I got everything I meant to say. The idea that hundreds of thousands of people invite you into their homes every night at 6.30 and don't switch you off when you come on, um, that's, that, that's the most important thing of, of what we do. I am bound to miss it, but I still get a buzz from it or I still got a buzz from it until yesterday and I'll miss that. Stuart talking earlier today but when he joined Look East Torval and Dean won gold at the Winter Games, Margaret Thatcher was in power and the news was dominated by the miners strike. So let's end tonight with a look at some of the big stories he was part of over the last four decades. Good evening. Storms with hurricane force winds of up to almost 100 miles an hour have brought death and destruction to the eastern counties. An overwhelming show of force taking residents and protesters by surprise. Hello and welcome back to Dale Fireman Essex. In the last couple of minutes, uh, somebody else has been brought out injured. We understand it's one of the travellers and we'll try and get more details of exactly what's happened to her before the end of the program. So here we are in the shooting range where Edith Cavill was shot a hundred years ago today. Earlier in the program we heard that choir singing Abide With Me and that was important because that was the hymn that Edith Cavill sung the night before she was shot. Hello, we're live in Shanghai where it's half past two in the morning local time. And that is the moment that the Olympic flame officially arrives in Norwich. How do you see yourself now? I mean, to some people you're something of a hero, to other people you're a convicted killer. What do you, how do you mm, see yourself? I don't think as many people think I'm a convicted killer. 
Do you know I was lucky enough to meet Sir Bobby Robson several times. I sat down and spent an hour talking to him just over a year ago. He was one of those people who loved football. And tonight all of the people in Ipswich who love football have come here to Portman Road to pay their respects to him. I enjoyed every day of my life as a manager. They were great days, Dipshits. They really were. Now, if we come back this far, those boulders there, to the bottom of this cliff, that's about 15 yards. And if we look up there, you can see that somebody's shower room has been left. And all you can see is the shower curtain flapping in the wind. Delia, Michael, let me give you the trophy. But I'm going to finish with a look at these fabulous fans. And we'll keep our fingers crossed for Norwich City in the Premiership. From all of us, good night. Happy days, 10,000 programmes. You can imagine we had a huge amount to choose from and he's an absolute star and it's very hard to imagine life here without him. We've had some great times over the years, haven't we, Jules? You're already crying uh, now. Yeah. You just don't <laughs> set me off. <laughs> We've had so many laughs, especially in makeup. Him on one side of the blue curtain, me and you on the other. <laughs> I'm just really sad we haven't been able to present all together in the studio for such a long time. And Stuart, you did so well to hold it together last night. But I'm afraid if I say anything at this point, I'm not going to be able to. So I'm going to really try to make my way through the September summary. It's hard to believe that the month has been and gone.